Welcome back, uh, Pod Deep. This is the Pod Deep podcast, episode 13. We have four of the five horsemen here. We're going to skip the intros. Let's just get right into it. The first topic, something we've been talking about. Um, I play a part in this because I, I kind of hyped it up. I thought the fight was going to happen November 19th. Uh, Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence Jr. The fight is probably canceled for November 19th. So we're just going to open up the discussion. Uh, who wants to go first? How do you guys feel about the negotiations and the news that we have gotten about this fight? How do you guys feel about the fight overall? Do you think it's going to happen? Are you disappointed? Of course you're disappointed, but how disappointed are you? So I'll just throw that out. Whoever wants to open it up, go ahead. I told y'all it wasn't gonna happen this year. Why? 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 I mean, it just, it just didn't seem like it, either side was working towards it. And oh boy, it's gonna be a year since he fought. Um, Terrence Crawford. Yeah, it's gonna coming up on a year since he fought. Now he gonna he gonna jump in the ring with uh, almost a year off with with Spence. I don't see. I, I just didn't see that happening. And I don't think I don't, I don't I don't I don't know I think I don't think Crawford really wants this fight. Yeah, that's what the I, word is now. I agree. The window seems like it's going it's closing on Crawford. It's like it's just the window is closing on the opportunity. I, it seems like to me they could have made it happen, and he didn't want to make it happen. So uh, that's what I think too. I mean, Earl Spence last fight was April of this year. They've been negotiating probably since May. Here we are, October. Like, I don't get it. I know Crawford turned 35 probably last week, last month, something like that. So, him fighting in 2023, that'd be a year plus, plus a month that he has a layoff. I, I think the dude's finna retire, me personally. You think he's gonna retire? Yeah, I, I don't think he. I, I think he's holding up Earl, Earl Spence's career. But I don't think cool. he's going to retire right before he's set to make his biggest payday ever. Shit, ain't he, he ain't acting like he's trying to make his biggest payday <laughs> ever. I mean, if, if he taking a deal that's, that's 65 35 with no guarantee, if, if all that shit is true. Man, that's a sucker deal. So that's the so that's the deal that was on the table that you heard on the table, sixty five thirty five? Sixty five thirty five in favor of uh in, in favor of Spence with no guaranteed money. So that's what that's what the report was coming back from the dude Mike Carpenter that um Crawford was trying to get paid out of the net versus being paid out of the gross, you know. And if you agree to everything, then what's the hold up, you know? If you signed your part, I'm, I'm pretty sure Earl signed his part first since it's his team negotiating, you know. I don't understand how all that can be true, though, you know. Yeah. That ain't adding up to me. Man, and I don't I understand how you all been taking this long and this is all your management team fought for you. with a, You know, you started off 50-50, but then you ended down with a 65-35 split. Like, that's that's horrible. After no, what I've been no reading, guarantee. no, I, I get it. After what I, everything I've been reading, it don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. It's just like I, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think the window, the window of opportunity to make the fight is closed. I, I really, just from everything from both sides I've been reading, it just don't seem like they're gonna make a fight happen. I don't know why they're so yeah. far apart all of a sudden, but right, it don't look right. like it's gonna happen. Yeah. You don't think it's going to happen at all, or, or yeah. it might happen, you know, a year or two later? I don't now. think it's going to happen at all, unless, because I don't think, do y'all think Spence needs that needs this fight to, to cement any kind of legacy or, or to make himself look bigger? Do you think do you think he needs the fight? Well, he won't one belt. He wants to be the first to be able to have four belts in, in, a, in a welterweight uh, division, which is that WBO the Crawford's hell. Hell, okay. And Crawford hadn't done anything to capture the other belt, mm -hmm. so it's only is it, they're the two rivals with each other. So either I'm gonna hold you from submitting your legacy because he's already did that at 140. 
Mm-hmm. Crawford already had all four belts at 140. Spence trying to be the first to do it at 147. I think uh, I, I don't think Spence needs his fight. Crawford yeah. needs his fight more. Than, Crawford needs his fight more than anybody because you talk about that 145 unification that he did. He ain't fight nobody. That little, that, that that African that he beat to get that fourth belt. <laughs> and he never, he, he never fought in the United States. You know, mm-hmm. ever. So Crawford has more to gain because he 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 been fighting, you know, plumbers and taxi cab drivers in his backyard <laughs> for thirty fights, you know what I'm saying? So now I all agree. of a sudden, you know, he gotta go up against Spence. Now Spence actually has fought, you know, top competitors, you know, and he went to England to fight old boy, broke his eye and beat him. Mm-hmm. You know, he took the port of fight. Yep. Uh, before, before uh, old boy did. Mm-hmm. So, I think Spence Spence don't need that fight. That's that's, that's where I'm sitting there with it, right? I'm I'm thinking the same thing. Like, you know, if he can't make the fight happen now. You know, why make it? Why make it later? Like, I think Bud needs Spence more than Spence needs Bud. So, I'm, I just I just think it's a it's, it's it's a dying. I don't think it's gonna happen. I really don't. But but Spence is missing uh, a rivalry or or a legacy fight in his career because, you know, right during the week of, of the Manny Pacquiao fight, that would have been his legacy fight. He had to pull out due to the eye injury. So that's one. Then you got Terrence Crawford. You know, I don't consider Sean, Sean Porter. I don't consider um, Danny Garcia. I don't consider Ugas. I don't consider... Um, um, Kill Brook. I don't consider them any legacy fights or rivals. No, they're not. But they're much better opponents than than old boy ever faced. Yeah, they are. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. And, and I don't think, like you said, I don't think he needs it to submit his legacy. But just looking back, you know, just to say he's the dude that took that beat all the champions to get his belts. You know what I'm saying? I think he on turns Crawford ass for that. You know. Mm-hmm. I would have, I would have, huh? Just in general, why is it so hard to make a fight in boxing? Like every big fight is always this drama. Like we shouldn't even know anything about this. It just should be done in the background. Here's a date. Here's the price. That's it. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're like talking it's, about their contract and their splits. Like, so what many, is this? So many- there's so many hands involved in it, man. It's just never, it's just so many people with so many teams, so many different angles. Everybody trying to get paid. Everybody want a piece of the pie and ain't doing no boxing. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers that want a piece of the pie ain't doing no boxing. So it's, and it's been like that. So it's, been, it's just crooked, man. It's just, just, like you used to say, there's just a crooked, just a crooked thing, man. Everybody want a piece of pie. Piece of the pie. Everybody yeah. got their hands in it, man. So it's too, it's so, too many. It's so short sighted, too. Like, if they go ahead and fight in December, they could probably run it back in June. You know, make make some money again, maybe, and then you know, do a third fight. It's like they just hung up on this first fight. The yeah. fight could have took place September, man, or either August of this year. Truthfully yeah. told, you know what I'm saying. Both of them, you know, considering that Crawford was out of his contract with Top Rank, there shouldn't have been any kind of roadblock between them. Nope. Like, there shouldn't have been any kind of because. The the you go back a year the whole the whole top of the of, of the streets was there Earl was ducking Crawford so if if he say I want to fight you after his last fight that should be music to Crawford ears let's get this on you know it shouldn't but these boxers man they they feel like if they lose they go um, the fans going you know abort them baseball teams lose it every week football teams lose every week. Basketball teams lose every week. Fans still go out and support their favorite teams. You know what I'm saying? So your favorite fighter lose, next fight, everybody be there to support these dudes. I don't know why they get hang up, hung up on this on this type of being scared to, to fight the best and challenging themselves. Mm-hmm. It's like that every division. Javante Davis, um, Ryan Garcia, all them dudes. Shakur Stevenson, all them dudes scared to fight each other. Now, do you think, but go ahead, Rod. No, go ahead. 
No, I was gonna I was gonna switch the topic. I was gonna ask y'all what y'all think about Tank and Ryan and Garcia. Do you think that's you think that's a fight that's, that's gonna happen? Well, I think the fans want it. I don't know if Oxford De La Hoya want it for, for his Ryan? Fighter, You know, yeah, for Ryan. I don't know if he wanted for Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, at the end of the day, if if he they feel like if, if their fighter lose, how do they go promote them? And and just you just go to the next fight if they if they recover well, you know what I'm saying? But but they all about the trying to win, 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 letting them fight bums, and then when you force to put them in there with a real dog, they get ate alive. It's over. It's they over. Yeah, they ain't never really had the, the, the real competition, you know yep. what I'm saying? Yep, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think that's gonna be the next I don't think this I personally don't think this fight gonna happen, Jay, but I think the next big fight we gonna have is that is that tank fight, that tank and Garcia fight. I think that's gonna be the next big fight. Big, big, big fight. I so I think my so. just I think, my I think boxing mm-hmm. I think boxing missing on the golden opportunity. Oh hell you know? yeah. Hell they, yeah. They they really they really BSing around in, in, in other sports are just getting that money, getting that opportunity, you know. And that's just why feel. and that's why you gotta respect UFC's hustle. You gotta respect how they how everything that's just right just clear just you see the yeah. you see the rankings you see the champions you see you see the fight schedule you know what I'm saying everything is transparent so only thing with the UFC hands, I'm sorry it ain't that many hands in the UFC though right true right true true and that's the that's, that's not the biggest that's piece a fact. You know, so so fight. when you're not getting a fight when you're not getting the fight you want in the UFC it's only one person that's at fault and that's Dana White that's his fault you know what I'm yeah. saying and, yeah. and he gonna take all that and just go on about his business because he don't want to lose who, who he think is the favorite. But in boxing, it's so many damn hands. You don't know which one to blame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like so many people involved. And UFC just so so different, man. So transparent. See everything. You see the rankings. You see mm-hmm. who who's fighting who. They they put good fights all the time. So and it's yeah, and it's good. constant. You ain't waiting a year to see somebody fight, man. <laughs> It's nah, so much better, nah. so much easier. Nah. Boxing yeah. is dying, dying right, right it in front is. of us. It's dying right it in front is. of us. Yep. The cars, the the, the cars they put together for the pay per view is 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 stacked, and it don't it don't be good competition. You overpay right. for the pay per view. You know yep. what I'm saying? Other than the main event, from what you wait on, it's it's not a great event. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I give hundred percent, hundred percent. You might mm-hmm. not even know them fighters on the UFC, but you guaranteed to get a bunch of knockouts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's good fights, man. It's good, good competition. Yeah. So that's the whole thing about that it. it is. Makes it good. I mean, I think boxing, boxing. I mean, it goes through these little ebbs and flows. You know, it's, it's just waiting on that next, you know, guy to carry the to carry the sport. Because I mean, the heavyweight division used to carry carry the sport. But, you know, That's been gone for a while, though. Yeah, but it's been gone because ain't no American heavyweights. Mm, true. You know, once, well, the, once the Klitsch, once the Klitschko's had it for a decade, you know people kind of moved on from the heavyweight division. Yeah. So what was this thing about? I ain't, I ain't get the thing about. Uh, I guess it was Joshu. Is he ducking the Gypsy King or something? I ain't get that. What What was that about? That he I gave him. Yeah. Fight. I thought they he had did. a. Uh, he didn't sign the agreement. So, so what? the Gypsy Gypsy King put it out there for them to uh, for them to fight in uh, d- this December, mm-hmm. and initially it was it was reported that the Joshua had agreed. Okay. Well, um, Tyson Fury hadn't confirmed that, and then he gave Joshua a, a deadline, and so uh, it looked like the deadline okay. has passed, and so they still don't have a fight because because it looked like what he's trying to do is have the fight fight Joshua before he has to fight Usyk, who has all the belts. Okay. He's beat Joshua ass. I think he will too, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. He would be Joshua ain't in the right right state of mind, do not with Tyson Fury. No, man. No. Mm-hmm. All right. And I think I think if, if things play out, it may be Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder uh again for the fourth time. Because I, oh, really? be, I don't think Usa can beat Deontay Wilder. Okay. 
So is Usyk set to fight Deontay Wilder? Huh? Is Usyk set, set, to, set to fight Deontay Wilder? Is that even? So, so Deontay Wilder has a fight this month. And if he get past this dude, I think his name is Robert Hulez or something like that. If he get mm-hmm. past him, um, Usyk said he was going to attend the fight and give him a title shot. Oh, wow. Okay. I think okay. He'll be, I think he'll be wilder. Um, I, I ain't never seen him take no punch like that. Like, Joshua really had a chance to to, to do something with him. Mm-hmm. You think, you think wild to wash, right? right? Yeah. No, I don't. I think he still got that. Yes. I mean. I still think he got their power. It's just shit. That you fight always. somebody six six nine, you know, that's bigger than you, you know, shit. <laughs> you can't get nobody to spoil that can emulate that shit. He you, you know, Sam, that, that, that's when I realized Tyson Fury wasn't no joke because I used to just look at him like a joke. Yeah. But around when he fought Deontay Wilder and got up off them punches, I was like, damn, you know. We can take some and lean on Yeah. Yeah. I Big boy. God. All right. Who who y'all got tonight, man? Who y'all got on, who y'all got the football game tonight? Uh, I got um, the Chiefs. Yeah, I got the Chiefs too. Why are y'all giving you Rodney, why are you giving your pick away? <laughs> what you talking about? You in a competition with him. <laughs> sure. okay. Don't give your pick away. <laughs> Jerry think I'm gonna go. Jerry think I'm getting there and changing my picks around. Shit, I would. <laughs> I know you would. If it's close. I don't care. It don't matter. The truth come out. <laughs> we already, um, because it said you got the Denver, right? Denver, yep. And I got the Raiders. What's the game um, looking like? Shit, mm-hmm. Raiders winning. They killing them. They last time by, I checked. They were up by a touchdown last time I saw them, but. No. Okay. That shit can change. Okay. I had I Denver. Okay, I had Denver too. So I think and I right you had one other you, we was different uh you had uh probably, probably the Monday night game too. Oh, of course. Yeah, y'all ain't going to make me. I don't care where I'm at on that Monday night game. You know where <laughs> you know where I'm going Monday night. That's, that's on, cat out of the bag on that one, Jay. You know where I'm going <laughs> on Monday night. Yeah. Hey, let me ask y'all a question. I'm a I'm a Russell Wilson fan. What y'all think going on this year? You think it's on the coach, or something's Russell not right with him? I, I ain't gonna say that, man. You can't say that, but it's just it's something. Of, it's something about how he can't improvise no more. You know, he used to be able he used to be able to get away with his legs, but he can't no more, he getting, man. He getting old. Yeah. Yeah, he's declining. That's that. You know, ain't nothing wrong. Even with him. when he not, even when he not improvising, his his throws don't look good this year. I mean, he always had a strong arm, but his the key was he he was never an on time quarterback. You know, he could never sit back in the pocket and pick your part. What happened is he'll get rushed, get loose, catch you know, lock in a DK Metcalf down the sideline for a big play. That kind of was his secret Go sauce. In. Was his secret mm-hmm. sauce, and I just he can't do that no more, man. It's just because this team is way talented than any other team he's ever had. Oh, he'd be lighting it up, man. I thought he'd be lighting it up. I'm surprised, man. Oh. I'm not. That dude, I'm shot. That dude is smoking mirrors for motherfucking five <laughs> years. Smoking mirrors. No, nah, I don't believe that. Smoking mirrors. He throwing, like Kyler Murray, yes. Throwing up Look, bullshit what's... passes. Um, <laughs> Running around for five, ten seconds, and then by week sixteen, that shit peter out, and they if they make the playoffs, they won and done. Man, when that cat got to the playoff, he was hot. He was whooping ass, man. Stop that. That defense was whooping ass. He still had to throw some shit. That defense was whooping. I'm ass. telling you, he he, when he he, he lost his he lost his legs, man. He just got yeah. old, lost his legs, so he just can't get out. Cause his line has always been terrible. Yeah, good line. He's always been on the run. He was able just to improvise, though. You know, he had he had chemistry with the receivers. He could improvise, but it just been bad, man. I, I, it's been bad. But I got him on one of my teams, and I see some. I see reports coming in. Look like he's having a good day today, a decent day today, anyway. Mm. I mean, yeah, he gonna he gonna be all right. Raiders won. Raiders won out. Okay, Raiders won that game. Yeah, Raiders won. Okay. Damn. So Rodney might be Rodney. You going? It's one of you should be one one ahead of the pack, two ahead of the pack. 
one. It's one. Uh, eight games to nine, Rodney. Yeah, he got he got Frisco, so that's gonna be the. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> good, good. And I'm sure we both got the got the Chiefs tonight, but he got he got Frisco going into Monday night. That's where I'm gonna get him, right there. <laughs> Okay. And Green Bay and uh, New England in overtime. Oh, okay. But I'm sure we all had Green Bay, right? Yeah. Yeah, we all had. Ain't no black quarterback, so I'm sure we all had Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> no black quarterback or coach. Speaking of coaches, what's up with what y'all think about that Boston situation? Dude. I just came. I, I want to hear the whole. Did anybody know the whole story? Matt Boston. Somebody. Keep- Keep sound like somebody shit. jealous. Sound like somebody jealous. Somebody, so who who jealous? A woman? Somebody from the Boston Celtics uh, organization, top head. They jealous. The the husband? No, not not the husband. Shit, the husband don't work for them. You know, it, it would be somebody in the um in in, in management uh, operations that that's jealous. You know, because if what he did is so egregious, why not fire him? Hey, so here's a, I, I, go ahead, Jared. Here's what I heard about that. If you sus, first of all, they're saying is the v- VP's wife that he was cheating with, and the, the deal about not firing him is if you suspend him, he doesn't get paid while he's suspended for that one year, mm-hmm. and he can't go get another job. So basically, they just don't pay him for a year and stop him from getting another job. They ask, so that's you, why, know, you know. It was a report said that they'll allow him if he finds employment elsewhere. They'll let him take it if he if he found it. Like that could be smoke and mirrors, or but so yeah. so what you saying, Jay, is he was he was doing he was messing with the the vice the VP's wife, right? Somebody oh. in upper management's wife. Yeah. Okay. So, you know that's why this story is so crazy. Okay. Okay. And that yeah, ain't but, no grounds. To, that's not no grounds to. Is, does she work for for Boston Celtics? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She used yeah. to book. She was she. The, I know the lady was booking. Like he, she booked all travel for the team, for the coaches, for everything. The actual lady. I didn't know she was tied to the to a, to somebody. You know, one of the VPs, one of the higher ups. I didn't know she was tied to them. Yeah, that's what makes the situation what it is. Because if he just fucking somebody, a travel agent. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. I know yeah, it was that something. Ain't, that ain't gonna, yeah. What well, made Matt Boyne's talking, right? I mean, it's something. Man. It's like, it's it, way he keeps sprinkling he stuff. Keeps it's like these deeper than nuggets, this. man. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like it's you know, deeper. How it's deeper like can deep. it be? Yes. But, but, but legally, you sh- it seems like you shouldn't have that type of. You shouldn't be able to punish him like that because it's almost like you know they frown upon upon you dating uh your co-worker right well in this situation you all are married working at the same job so that's not a strike but when you have infidelity you can't fucking punish me because i've crossed the line like that i mean he probably got he probably got an ethics clause in his contract yeah yeah as a coach yeah. Yeah. you can't you can't bang upper management's wife who the vp if that's true he's probably friends with the owner it's just some stuff you can't do i guess they ain't tell him that (laughs) (laughs) i guess that shit did register to him like i shouldn't be doing this you need to back up off me it had to be you knew it had to be big something like that man because this dude was a you know he was a good coach man he, he took the team mm-hmm. he took the team to the, to the championship i mean a, a good coach you just don't let a good coach walk out just not coach you know what i'm saying so, I, I don't think i paid attention to the fact that how long him and me alone been fucking engaged yeah yeah i, I we're, talking, we're talking seven to ten years yeah mm-hmm. yeah like what, what's going on here but the, but the crazy thing was he knew this was going he knew this was going to happen right like he knew this news was coming out like five six months ago oh boy had near long move <laughs> he had a move to boston <laughs> i'm like dude come on man yeah, that's how you get stabbed in your sleep that's, that's how you get uh, move. that's how that's how you get attacked in the shower <laughs> the curtain just come back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you t- 
too strong, he man. Yeah, he, he tripping. He, he out doing, there. Oh, man. So, does he get another job? Yeah. Yeah. Might be blackballed. You just got to watch the girl. You just got to watch it. You know, get, your wife can't come up there. Might be you know blackballed, man. That's, you know, that's, a, that's like a Mark Jackson thing, yeah? You know, he might be blackballed. He might be. He might be. He, he may be with the, you know, owner, bite VPs. Like, he done crossed the line, man. We don't do each other like that. I, yeah, he, but, he could be, but, man. But gay, gay, talking about gay people, and then banging the owner's wife. I don't know. Not not the, the he, owner's wife. The vice president. The vice president. I get it. His wife. Two I think, things. You, know, you know, they all live by I that. Somebody give him a shot. They all live by that that code. You know what I'm saying? Like we, <laughs> us owners, we gon we gon. We gonna legislate the way we want to legislate. We gonna let you know who we in, who out, and if anybody cross the line, they out. So you never know, man. I mean, but yeah, but you know when you when you think line, about when you right. think about it, that's get back. You know the vice the vice the VP is the guy who and the general manager is the guy who's over the coach. If I've asked you for certain certain players and all this shit, and you talk slick to me, I thought it was that's why. The VP of finance. I thought that's what I read. Hmm, I don't know. I didn't I, see, I don't finance. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't think he has if it's a vice if it's the VP of finance, you know, he don't really have a lot to do with the coach. How do you get caught? Or the or the roster or you know, shit like that. How how hey, the fuck do you get caught? Her the 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 dude's wife a private eye. So the, so the dude's Say that wife, again. The dude's wife, he, the girl that was cheating, her wife hired a private eye. He he hired a private eye. To, to, on to his file, wife. On his wife. He knew she was messing yeah. with somebody and then figured out he was tied to the coach. Mm. <laughs> it's wild, man. This story just crazy, man. That's embarrassing. That that's embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. that's embarrassing as a that's embarrassing as a man because you you talk about how you know they suspended the coach when y'all get into divorce. Yeah. Yeah. When y'all get in the motherfucking divorce. You gotta do all that. The coach you know really what I'm saying? like he was on the, yeah. the coach was he was on his bullshit, but he, he was really collateral damage. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was yeah. old boy and his wife having an issue. He hired a, pri- a private eye to mm-hmm. check her out. That so happens he fucking around with the coach. So yeah, it's, it's like you did all that shit to to not do nothing. You you hurt the guy who she was cheating with, but you ain't did shit to her yet. We'll see, we'll see. But it's it's crazy, yeah, man. But, but nobody cares about that though. No, nope. nah, I, I I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm surprised that he ain't invite the motherfucker out for a boat trip and <laughs> pull out the evidence. <laughs> you can swim your ass back, <laughs> or you can jump overboard. But either way, you're getting off this motherfucking boat with no life jacket. Anybody That's how seen, I would play that shit. Anybody seen it? Anybody? Anybody? Seen what? Anybody seen the, the lady, the the chick that was a? I saw a picture, but. I don't know if it's her or not. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, they've been showing pictures, but you know, yeah. typical, your typical white girl. Nothing, nothing special, huh? <laughs> nothing special. Got you. I got you. But it doesn't cost his ass his job, though. Yeah, That's man. Cool. That yeah. shit was in the media all week. Yeah. On the Coolio death top that shit, you know. But other than that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, man. Besides I just, that, that's just a media week. I just wish I could hear more because I, I know there's just some some details, man. Like I like I said, Matt Matt Bourne just keep talking about what he mm. did. I don't think he gonna ever get a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of and see that hit home for Matt Bourne. Yes, that hit home yeah. for him. Yeah. Why? Shit, his homeboy, uh, Fisher. You talking about when him, like that, Dirk? him when, when Fisher was sleeping with his. Sleep with his girl. Well, yeah, it was. It wasn't kind of his girl. They wasn't together, right? It was like his baby mama, right? No, that was his ex. So still, it's like he found out through his son. But it's not the same thing. They ain't together. 
They ain't together. They she live uh, in a whole nother house, whole nother residence. But let, let me let me. Now, now should he have told him that he was messing with his woman, his ex? Okay, yeah. Let me let me Bro. say this part. Everything you saying is true, right? But if you're not messing with her, like you said, it shouldn't be no issue. If you ain't y'all ain't you know doing what y'all doing every other weekend, whatever, whatever, shouldn't be no more issue who she date, who she mess with. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But if that's what y'all are doing, and when he married at the time when he did that, who Fisher? Uh, Derek Fisher. No, I don't think, I think he was Derek married. Fisher was either in the process of getting a divorce or, or or married or something like that. However, that went though. Okay. But let's but let's not let's not ignore the fact that motherfucking Matt Barnes ain't the most <laughs> uh, stable motherfucker either. Though. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but that'd, be, you know, that'd be every reason why you wouldn't play that shit with him. He been known to fly the handle <laughs> a little bit. So. Yeah. Right. 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 Oh man. Let's segue. Let me see if you guys heard about this one since we kind of in this cheating world. Okay. Uh, Saturday Night Live, Keenan Thompson and his co worker, um, what's his name? Red, something red. Chris Red. The dude that do Kanye? Yeah. Okay. So Keenan is getting a divorce from his wife. They've been married for like 11 years. They have two kids. Mm-hmm. Chris Red is now dating his soon to be ex wife. And they've both been on that same show for about seven years or so. That's fine. Can't do that, man. Which one which one is worse, Boston or this one? That's fine, because that's like your cat castmate that you saw come into the door who you probably wrote the 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 rear carpet out to show him the ropes around the facility. Mm-hmm. And he pulled a dirty Mac move like that. Yeah, yeah man. Wife. That's a, that's a, to me, there's enough women around, man. I mean, like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I mean, like, come on. At least wait. At least wait. You know what I'm saying? Wait till the wait till the thing is finalized or something, man. You, I mean, it's just it's too many women. There's too many women in the world for you to be strong on on one person like that. I mean, just wait. That's my opinion. I think that's way. I think that's way crazier. <laughs> wait, that's crazy, yeah, man. I think. You know, I really got to see a lot of this when I was uh, in the military. You know, cats was back doing each other left and right. And it was like, that shit was foreign to me because the way we grew up, like, mm. okay, I don't want Vanita. Yeah, right. Like, I don't, right. I don't want Renee. Like, right. why would I do that? Right. <laughs> exactly, you know? man. So right. that's how we grew up. But, like, a lot of other motherfuckers, they just don't look at it that way. No, dude. They don't look at it like I give you a story. Story of the day. Well, one story. So we was I was in Japan and um Mark. Mark was uh he had gotten to a fight, got beat up, whatever. <laughs> and they <laughs> they had him on lockdown, so he couldn't leave the ship. So his girl um came by my room, knocking on the door and everything, right? So mm-hmm. I let her in, I'm like, What's good? She's like, uh, what you doing? You know, you know, I think I had a chick in there already or whatever. And, uh, you know, she peeking around like, you know, let me come in. Let me, you know, I'm like, no, nah. like, no, nah, I got somebody. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, I go to the club and she called me like, where you at? I'm like, on my way to the club. I'm, she's like, hey, yo, I, you know, I'm really feeling you. I think we should. I'm like, Dog, oh, oh, you shit. my man, girl. <laughs> right. Like, you my man, girl. You right. Know? And left it at that. And he was like. Shit, I would have hit if I was you. No. That's what Mark said. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, That's man. how Mario is. He, he don't give a fuck. Really? Yeah, but, it, but, I, but like I said, Mario don't give a fuck. we grew up different. Like, we didn't, you know, I don't oh, want man. your girl, your ex-girl. Right. No, dude. Right. It's foul. That's a fucking that, 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 that shit make it awkward. That shit make it awkward. Obviously, that shit was underneath the whole time you was with her. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. If I if I immediately jump into a relationship with her, then obviously, you know, we had some underlying stuff going That's on. That's it, man. Shit. That's it. You know, right. At least I had the feelings, you know. Right. You, you know, I'm here you are, we on a show together. <laughs> and the minute I'm minute I'm going through a breakup with her, you with her? 
<laughs> corny shit. Get out of here, man. Get out of here with that, man. Right. So, so Jerry, is that the reason Keenan and his wife were getting a divorce? I didn't think about that. Uh, it could be. I don't know. Yeah, so uh, stupid. I don't know. It, yeah. The news about his divorce had been out for a while. Right, right, but right. This story just came out this week. So maybe, maybe. That's crazy. Yeah. And they've been in several skits together. Oh, really? It worked. Yeah. Side, side note. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Keenan funny. I do. Yeah. Um, I think this is the best show that has highlighted his comedic uh genius role versus what he was doing for Nickelodeon. Oh, you know Saturday Night Live. I, uh-huh. I got I, I gotta give him another try, man, because I just he just don't make me laugh, man. I just don't like I, I just don't get his shit. Like I just don't get his shit. I'm like You don't like the you don't like the uh, Family Feud when he do Steve Harvey? What's no. up, player? <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't like when he do out. You don't like when he do Al Sharpton? Nope. I I, I remember him. I remember that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't find it just funny. You know. I don't know. I didn't find it. <laughs> you got Al down pat. You got funny. Al down pat. That's Kevin it. Hart to me. Oh no. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Kevin Hart's not funny to me, so that's why I say he's Kevin Hart because he's not funny. Keenan's not funny. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, I, think know, Keenan, I think Keenan's funny. Tracy Morgan's not funny. Hey, <laughs> now, now listen, brother, uh, hustle man, hustle on Martin. Man. <laughs> yeah, the way Martin used to use Tracy Morgan, he was getting the funniness out of out of Tracy Martin. He was getting hey, the funniness out of Tracy. Hey, Hustle Man was I lo- funny. I loved him on Hustle Man. Yeah. Hustle, Hustle Man was him. funny. Now, that was funny. That's yeah. how I know Tracy Morgan yeah. with Hustle Man. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's something written for him, you know. Yeah. His, see, his some, stand, see, sometimes. Stand up and all that shit. I get you on that. No, I agree with you on that. I Mike think Epps, I think Mike he. Epps stand up ain't good. Nah, but see, he's good. Mike Epps is funnier in, in, in movies and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Or just in interviews, you know. Who, in your opinion, right? Who good stand up? I mean, shit, it ain't but a couple for me. You know, Chris, Bill. Chris, Dave, and uh, you know, and Cat Williams had to grow on me. What? Cat Williams, Cat Williams cracked me up, dude. To me, yeah, Cat Williams was one of the best stand up. To me, nah. he I, can't. He not, to me, his he, last one was ass though. Like See, Cat, Cat Williams is a 30 minute funny. He ain't no whole hour funny to me. You know, like I like I, I think the funniness about Cat Williams to me is sometimes how he say different things. Like he was like, you know who the biggest drug pushes out here? Your doctors. Dr. Fauci? How he say different things. <laughs> that shit ain't gonna make me like, you know, uh just gut laugh, but it's 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 how he say and pronounce different things to me, you know. Like I that's he all, get preachy to me, and sometimes that's all a part. Com- that's all a part of yeah. That's all a part of the stand up, though. You know what I'm saying? It's the delivery yeah. and everything. So that's what makes it good. Yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't I don't know if I would be willing to to pay some money to go see him. I would, mm-hmm. man. I, I think yeah. I, I think I think he's, I think he still got a good one in him. I think he still got. See who? Cat Williams. Cat Cat Williams. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat, Cat, yeah. <laughs> we, we, uh, before COVID, man, he, you know he comes in like every Thanksgiving. Oh, does. And we've okay. been going. Yeah, every year, every Thanksgiving, we we've been going. Yeah, I, I Cat is still. Like he's still good. Mm-hmm. I like him. I like him in the interviews and stuff like did that. I, did I ever go to the helium room? Yeah, I've been to the helium. Never, never been. So, I saw uh, we saw Bruce Bruce the last when he was here at the Helium Room. <laughs> you know it, it's it's smaller. It's it's uh, Bruce Bruce funny man. He, he old school he funny, funny man. <laughs> he just it, it just had you laugh on GP. That Helium Room kind of cool man because you you get to see smaller acts like you get to see like Ha Ha Davis coming. Yeah, yeah, I know Ha Ha Davis is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's my boy. So, so he coming, he coming, uh, and like. Uh, you know, bubble dub in there. It's like just a them local, like more of them Instagram kind of comedians become 
And they'd be kind of funny. But yeah, we saw uh, Bruce Bruce there. And he was it was good. It was good. He was funny. I like uh Chris Chris Rock. I like Dave Chappelle and and then I like Lavelle Crawford. Lavelle, oh, yeah. Lavelle Crawford. Did I did I hear that right? Lavelle Crawford. Yeah. Who? <laughs> Lavelle Crawford? Yeah, Lavelle Crawford. <laughs> Lavelle Crawford up there. That, Lavelle Crawford funny as fuck. Wait a minute. My Wi-Fi is something. Yeah, your Wi-Fi. <laughs> I got Lave, I got Lavelle as <laughs> in my top three. I got Lavelle in my top three. I think my top three comedians. Yep. I got him in my top three. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Lavelle Crawford. The Lavelle fat Crawford. Dude skinny. Said it again. The fat dude that turned skinny. Yeah, he ain't skinny. He he still he plump. He's still two hundred plus. What's your top three? Hughes. Who? You, Hughes. Oh, you said Lavelle's uh, in your top three. What's your top yeah, so, three? So 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 um Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, and Lavelle Crawford. That's my top three. <laughs> you said it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm standing on that. You can take any of his specials, whoever your third is, compare them to, to, to Lavelle Crawford. Oh. I'm Cat telling you. Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Cat Williams. Man, he'll work Cat Williams' ass out. Stand up for stand up. Do funny. Wow. We, we are recording this, right? I'm telling you. You better, you better take your shit out. Jerry, your I'm, top I'm three. A, a... It's Chappelle, Chris Rock. Top three right now, top three all time. Right now. Right now. Right now. Chappelle. People you can go to who you know you're gonna get a good laugh and a, a nice big, you know, produced show. Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and I, I we I would go Cat Williams. Cat Williams is up and down, you know, depending on what he's going through in life. But yeah, Cat Williams, number three. What's yours? Uh, you know, it's it's hard. I like Cat Williams. I like Dave Chappelle. That third one, man. So you don't I, find Chris Rock funny? No, I don't. I don't find I find I I I've laughed hard at that one uh, to Chris Rock. That uh, is it bigger and bigger and blacker or bigger and deafer or something mm-hmm. like that? You know, the one <laughs> that back. one joke where where he say uh, books is uh, books is kryptonite for niggas. That's 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 like the hardest I've laughed <laughs> off anything. I laughed so hard, but I, I think he I think he loud and corny to me. I just don't get them. Um, I mean, I think. Well, I mean, it's all you know, subjective. But Dave Chappelle is corny. Yeah, I, I think, I think Dave Chappelle, his whole, his whole thing, and I've learned to like him because I didn't like him at first. Like, yeah, I mean, I until we all went down here in St. Louis, that's the first time I really thought I really liked him. But I didn't like him before then, so he grew on me. But from day one, Cat Williams has always made me laugh, man. I just, I just get his, I just get his humor. You know what I'm saying? I get, I get it, I get his humor. But, but now nah, that we third to, one, I don't know. We went to a, a comedy show at the Ambassador one time, and it was like a hood comedy show. Like, wasn't nobody known? It was just, it was basically like some niggas got up on stage and did comedy. And um, it actually turned out all right. You know, yeah. it sat far enough from the stage where we know we wouldn't get roasted. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and I, like I like them little comedy settings, man. Like when you go to the helium, it'll be cool. It's a, like a, a intimate setting. Um, mm-hmm. I tell you, we was in uh, Nashville, and I was. You ever seen? You know, you know that dude Craig Robinson. Craig Robinson from the Office. I hate that. Oh dude. yeah, yeah, big dude, Pizza big Hut, dude. Pizza Hut commercial dude. Yeah, the Pizza yeah. Hut dude. I hate that dude. He realized his whole act is on a keyboard. He just sit up playing music, the whole act, man. I was like, it, it was, it was, it wasn't good. It was, it was probably a, a a six out of ten. He said some funny stuff, but he he did the whole thing musically. Like it was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. So <laughs> I didn't know that. I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> Every time I see that goddamn Pizza Hut commercial, I lose it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's how I feel about Kevin Hart. 
That dude is a hack. I don't know why he remind me of Bert. Who? Is it a hair? <laughs> Craig Robinson. You remind me of Bert Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Got that round afro head. <laughs> oh man, I, man, I, I still be seeing Burke, man. I be seeing him up at uh, up at uh, the Snooks, Snooks on Union and Kings Highway. I mean Union mm. and um uh, Union and Natural Bridge. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's been about it's it's been about a few years, but yeah, I bumped I bumped into him. He a butcher or some shit. Oh really? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Burke, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Oh, shit, man. That's good. All right, let's touch on uh, another topic. We don't have to go too far in depth. And let me preface this: this is not advice. We're going to talk about stocks. This is not advice. Just, just unexpert opinion. Just what we think about stocks. We have a little back and forth going. Um, the word from you guys is: this is a time to get in. I'm saying wait. Let it bottom out. Let's talk about stock picks. What's what's some good stock picks? Or how do you guys feel in general about the stock market right now? Shitty. I I, I, I would I, love to to go ahead, sir. Nope. I, I same school. It is shitty. It's shitty, man. But it's you can you got to buy them. Now. You got to buy in, man. There's there's things you got to you got to if you if you're my if your objective is to gain wealth long term you can't be out of the stock you can't never be out of the stock market you got to keep your money in here like if there's there's i'm gonna get some i'm gonna i'm gonna email you guys some uh some stats they said you know if you if you took your money out of the stock market um if you missed the 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 if you missed the first the, the over the last 10 years if you missed the the five best days in the stock market and like any any one of the any one of the blue chip stocks, you know, you have a third of the return that you would have had. That made sense. So like if, if you was if you've been investing in and out for the last ten years, but you missed the five best days just because you was on the sideline, you mm-hmm. you ain't did nothing. Your money gotta it has to stay there, man. And I know it looks ugly. So that's why you should, mm-hmm. you know, capitalize when when you like we've been saying, squeak capitalize when the, when the, you know, I mean that's just investing one on one, right? Buy low, sell high. I mean, just it, you have and to. And the, and the good thing about the market being shitty, here's here's one of the good things about the mar- market being shitty. Seven ten years ago, the market could have been shitty, but you still had to pay pay fees for those stocks. With the market being shitty now. And with COVID, they have they have eliminated those fees. You know, back in the days, I, I bought like a what was it, uh, BlackBerry smartphone stock. That damn stock was probably selling for probably let me say seven dollars or some shit like that. Well, the commission fees on top of it made me buy for thirteen dollars. So I was already upside down. Now you fast forward to twenty twenty two, you don't have to pay you don't have to pay those commission fees for for most. Um, um investment companies that you're dealing with you just purchase the stock and there's no kind of fees like like it used to be it used to be hard to to purchase these damn stocks and then sell them you know what i'm saying all these damn hidden fees they had in them and all that shit but now you can just buy this shit get your emotion pushed out of it and like say say you, you you're doing it for the long term it's okay to do it's okay to do short term but you just got to know what you're doing but for the long term investment you want to dump your money. You want to you want to dump your money in there. You want you want to at least take like five hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Put that shit in the market and watch that shit grow and and get and get emotionally evolved. Get that get your emotions you get, out of there. You you know get out saying? of be, be, believe in that stock. Do your research, and when that shit keep dropping, you buy more because once it start going up and start trading and shit, now you at the option whether either you're gonna sell it or you're gonna hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? But at this point, I wouldn't want to buy Tesla at eight hundred something a share. Whereas right now it's at two something. You know that damn thing gonna go back up. Mm-hmm. So you want to buy it while it's cheap, you know. And that's different from how we were, we were taught and, and how we normally function and do things, you know. So mm-hmm. you just have to really reprogram yourself, you know. Now, what's your opinion on that, Jared? 
Uh, you're right. You want to buy low, sell high. But just my thing is, you, you're right. You're not saying anything wrong. I'm not against what you're saying. But my point is, I don't think that we're at the bottom. So I don't want to buy at 20 and then in a week it's at 15 and then 12. I want to catch it when it, you, you never know when it's the bottom. So you're not going to catch it right at the bottom. But I want to catch it when it hits 12 and then it's on its way to 13, 14. Things are looking up. Like I don't want to just keep buying in the, the middle of a storm. You know what I'm saying? While it's dropping. Mm -hmm. I, like if I more... miss a few dollars, who said? It? No, I was just saying, but you, Somebody... but you, but the, but the whole idea is you buying more shares of it, though, Jared. You so mm -hmm. I get exactly what you're saying. It's, it hate, it sucks, <laughs> but you buying more shares. You like you, you capitalizing on the more, you you, you just you capitalizing on just more shares. That's the whole idea behind it. Yeah, I get you. You know, okay, you can afford more because the price is lower. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And did you? I think this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Jay. This I'm just going to say, we're probably going into a recession. It's things are probably, you know, have to get worse before they get better. So I'm just on the sidelines, looking for safe bets and just kind of waiting. I still look every day, all day, but. You know, I'm just waiting. Man, you, you gotta buy some of this shit that's filled. <laughs> you totally right. I gotta let it drop. <laughs> you to you're totally right. Especially if you if you retirement age, you don't you know you get on the sideline if you got a big nest egg that you can. I get that, but um, this one guy always told me the stock market is like just think of somebody just playing with a yo yo on an escalator. So the escalator is going to continue to go up you know, for the long term. The escalator is going to go up for the long term, but you got somebody with a yo-yo, that stock's going up and down. But the key is, it's going up. It's going up. So where you start at year one, year five, you're going to make money, period. No matter what that stock has done, you go, it's going to go up and down, up and down, but you're on that escalator that whole time. It's all It's always going up. So that's how I always thought about it, man. So I just, I don't even... And I always told I got a job, so I ain't gonna look at the market every day because I, I I'll, I'll go crazy mm -hmm. looking at the market every day. So I, I I just do my job, but I let the market do its job, man. That's it. But no, I, I get you what you said. I grew up I grew up with a di I grew up with a different notion. I grew up believing stock markets was like a, a slot machine, mm. and that's what made me more emotional connected. You know, because shit, if, if I'm looking at it from that aspect then I'm going to get my ass up off the slot that ain't hitting, you know? And and with stocks, you, you're really not supposed to do that. Once you, once you have a really legitimate company mm -hmm. and you're buying their stock and the and, and bottom falling off that mobile, but you're just really building up shares in it. Mm -hmm. So when things do pick back up, you got all these shares built in. Now it's starting to grow, grow, grow. And you busting here because you didn't bought, you didn't bought, you didn't took a thousand dollars and bought this, this, this damn Tesla stock at two dollars. Now mm -hmm. it's selling for over two hundred something a share. So even when it even when it dropped from two hundred to one ninety, you still above the, the two dollars that that you originally purchased. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take like, like I used to work for Charter. Uh -huh. That Charter stock that I was that I that I had uh, back in the days that I sold it was it was probably selling for twenty six dollars. That damn stock now is probably three hundred. I didn't see it up to. I didn't see it up to five something. Yeah. I yeah. regret that I never kept that damn stock. Yes. I regret. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get. I can't you get, go back in time. Yeah, you, you you get, and then the whole the whole idea. When I was telling you how the dollar cost average. I understand what what that means when you dollar cost average. It's just that you you buy you buy it all. You buy the stock price. You buy the stock all over the board all over the board but when you mm -hmm. when you average it all out you paying a good price for the stock as long as you've been buying it as long as you mm -hmm. keep buying it you average all your your costs mm -hmm. together and you bought it at a good price mm -hmm. man even though if it's crazy one month That's right. not crazy one month it's, it's all about just keep doing it just consistency of doing it so mm -hmm. that's all man that's all <laughs> animal right? winner animal winner bed jerk uh, we, huh. we'll see i really like I, I this is one of the areas where i'm not i'm not a uh, proficient at so 
I just kind of keep, keep quiet and try to soak up some game. You into you into real estate, right? No. I mean, <laughs> that no wasn't for you. That was I was off camera. You on camera? It's some it's some it's some real estate stock out there to uh, purchase. Huh? I said some real estate stock out there for for you to purchase. That's that's okay. volatile though, man. That's, it is. That's it is. volatile. That's a volatile stock, man. That's a volatile stock. Stick to tell you, Jared. Stick to blue chip. Just stick. To, I'm telling you, don't spec. Don't speculate. Stick to your blue chip, man. You'll be great. You, you all the little money you can throw at blue chip stocks. They're gonna be around Procter and Gamble, Tide, Walt Disney. Got them. You know McDonald's. Got them. They just they gonna be there, man. They ain't going Hasbro. nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gonna yeah, be there. I got them. So Jerry and, uh, and I've been messing. I've, I've been messing with stocks with dividends. You know, yeah, for, for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I've been messing with stocks with yeah. dividends and stuff like that. You know, just trying to figure out who who pay the most and trying to yeah. build build that up and stuff google and stuff apple you know for sure yeah i'm just trying i'm just trying man at the end of the day i, re- I realized like my 401k ain't gonna hold me down so mm-hmm. i'm playing with the stock market to try to grow some side money yeah very very yeah all right that was stock talk <laughs> <laughs> my <Somebody> throat <laughs> we covered boxing pretty Little football stocks, yeah. cheating, <laughs> comedy. <laughs> I'm still tripping off that Lavelle Crawford. I was I'm looking <laughs> up. I, I better do y'all research. Don't sleep on Lavelle Crawford. I'm telling hey, you, I'm, that I'm, boy had you laughing. He listen, he remind me of somebody that went to Sumner with us. I'm telling you, he is funny. Lavelle, Lavelle is better than Mike Epps. Yeah, he consistent. Mike Epps, Mike Mike Epps would give you a performance that he did in Oakland. Yeah. It had you laughing, but when but when you go back and, and research, you're like, man, same that joke. was from yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the same jokes. Yeah. The same same joke. I like Mike Epps. I get it. I like Mike Epps, but yeah, the Ville Croft, he's funny, and he can jump. He the dude that if if you try to mess up his set, he gonna destroy you. Dude, funny. I'm telling you. Let's wrap up this episode. This was episode 13 of the Pod Deep Podcast.